Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Today we are talking about the sadly discontinued Habiki 17. Um, I've never seen a demand for a, a product or a brand name as much as I have with this. The only other thing that's comparable really is Macallan. Um, but as you know, whiskey drinkers are all aware of the demand in Macallan within our own sort of localised areas, especially in the UK. Habiki has been something that I've seen grow and grow and grow. Uh, the 12 was discontinued in 2015, replaced by the Harmony. Uh, the 17 has now been discontinued as of September this year. They will cease to make any more. Um, how long that stock will last for is unknown to me, but the price four years ago, when I first started working in the retail side of whiskey, was £90 in or there around. This bottle's now, as near as makes no difference, £500 a bottle. Pretty much across the board, no matter where you go. The 21, I think, is 550 I can't remember its original retail price, I think it's like 175 but nonetheless, it's very expensive. Um, it's a similar trend with a lot of Suntory products. Hakshi 12 is also discontinued now. And it's, it's the worst case scenario of supply and demand, in my view. So many people want it because they've heard it's amazing and it's picked up all these awards. And it is an amazing whiskey. Um, you know, I think uh, the collecting side of the world and the, all that, it's, you know, well, another kettle of fish, we won't go into it today. But uh, sadly, we've seen the demise of two products from the Habiki range, which were amazing. And today we're going to chat about the 17. It is three whiskies, or three distilleries I should say, but it's a combo of 35 different styles of malts and grains, which is unbelievable from three distilleries. So there are some experimental products in there that Centauri weren't talking about, which is fair, you know, just like KFC, you've got to keep the recipe a secret. And this uses a combo of American oak, Spanish oak, and Mizanara, much like Yamazaki 12, much like Hakushu 12 does. So they really keep it in-house, they're keeping things very similar. Um, that's enough. We'll kind of talk about the nose and the smell and you know what it tastes like. So let's dive into that. Two products straight away make themselves very well known. Uh, one is Cheetah, which is a beautiful grain whiskey, um, which has become available in the UK within the last year. That always smells of kind of like a basil and green tea. It's got this really nice kind of green leaf element about it. And backing that up is Hakshu, which is a very similar flavored style of single malt. It's slightly peated. Um, if you're a Laphroaig fan, it's nothing to get excited about. It's like the, the tiniest bit of smoke, but you really get this big hit of green, summery, fruity flavors. There's kiwi, there's lime, like passion fruit and papaya. Yamazaki I've always known as like a slightly richer style, one of those kind of furry stone fruits, mango and apricot. A little bit of that is starting to pull through now, along with the usual suspects of caramel and vanilla, which we'll pick up in pretty much every whiskey ever. Mizanara, which is a cast type within this product, still yet to make yourself known, but Mizanara is always something you should expect on the finish of a whiskey. Um, it's kind of like a little hidden surprise hidden within the product. But at the front it's very green, summery, light, almost cocktail-esque. Mint, basil, green tea, lime, passion fruit. Elements of caramel and vanilla, a little bit of honey. And again, a slightly kind of wood resiny element, um, like varnish. Not as offensive as, of acet as acetone is but something like you know, a varnish that's been on for a while, something you can still smell when you get up to like an old piece of wood. Let's taste it, we'll see where we're at. Does it match up to the nose? There's the Yamazaki, and there's the Mizanara. Now the initial first taste is like tobacco leaf, but really fresh tobacco. I'm not a smoker, but my dad used to roll cigarettes, and that's a smell that kind of lingers in the back of my mind quite a lot. It is pouch tobacco. You can kind of smell the fruitiness of it, the earthiness of it, even when it's on your palate. The texture isn't like an utter delight. Now imagine the texture of Johnny Walker Blue Label, but with like, you know, a lot more kind of amplified flavor going on. The Hakshu and the Cheetah die off quite quickly on the palate. They are more of an ethereal presence on the nose. The Yamazaki steps in. It's a 
big hit of caramel, there's some nice oak spice in there. I'm pretty sure the tobacco is coming from the Yamazaki side as well. Could be the Mizunara. But then on the finish, it's nowhere near as dry as you would expect it to be. For something that contains 35 different styles of whiskey and Mizunara, Spanish and American oak, there's almost no dryness. My palate's still fairly quenched. There's still water kicking around on the side of my tongues and my cheeks. Let's try again, see if anything changes. A lot more sherry on the second rim. Raisin. Like dried pineapple. Mango. Again, I think that's the Yamazaki. It's like kind of a, a bright and almost, um, I think I've used this phrase before. I can't remember what review it was on, but almost like a kind of glassy finish. You know, it's very clean and crisp. I love blended whiskey, as you all know. Um, single malt's bourbon, it's all fantastic. I honestly, like hand on heart, believe that is probably the finest, oh no, one of the two finest blended whiskies I've ever tried. Uh, the other one is the Cutty Sark Tam O'Shanter, which is like an unbelievable heavy sherry 25 year old blend. Um, it is phenomenal. The balance of profile is beautiful, the nose is eccentric. Um, it really mimics a lot of Japanese food, you know, it smells wonderful, but as soon as you taste it, this kind of like explosion of other flavours that you just didn't expect. Um, it is £500 a bottle though, in its current state. Should have bought one four years ago, never did. Um, you know, I've got this little bit left to enjoy uh, with a couple of good friends. Taking price out of the equation, it's getting to a 10, you know, it's like nine and a half. It's really pushing that 10 boundary, including the price. Much like Yamazaki and Hakshu, sadly, does deduct it quite a lot. And I think inclu including the price, I can only give it like a maximum of an eight. Despite the beautiful nature in the blending, despite the, the bottle, which is one of my favorite designs in all of whiskey, that 24 sided bottle for the 24 small seasons in Japan, the original kind of paper that they use to mark their, their heritage. So much love has gone into the bottle, so much love has gone into the blend, um, but demand has just kind of seen it go like that. Um, so based on its current valuation, it is only an 8. Uh, it's still a very good score, but I can't feasibly afford to buy this on my own. As I imagine most people watching this can't, it's something that's out of our reach as general whiskey buyers. If you see it at a bar or at a tasting bar, I mean to take advantage of it. Um, but yeah, a beautiful thing that we've sadly now lost purely due to demand. Um, and I think that's something in 10 years, which if we, if we see come back, amazing. If we don't, you know, we will long after it, we will kind of uh, lust after it with an element of nostalgia. Um, but final score is an eight. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, hopefully this review's kind of settled some opinions on this whiskey. Um, this is The Whiskey Shop in Manchester. I've been Phil, that's Hibiki17, and I will see you all next week. Cheers.